Welcome to Travelling Tides, where our little family lives simply, explores freely, and chases the kind of adventures that stay with you long after they're over. In the days ahead, we'll dive beneath these waters to hunt, catch, and cook straight from the ocean. There's something pretty special about watching the sunrise out here. But for us, this particular morning feels even more significant. We've done a full lap around the sun since we last stood on this sand. But not every adventure goes to plan. <sighs> what a night. Our neighbours, some friendly Cooktown folk, um, they had a party anyway. They, I think they had a good time. They're probably not having a good time this morning. Unfortunately, that meant that we didn't get really any much sleep. They probably quietened down at, what, 4 a.m.? At which time um, Arlington started really struggling to breathe with croup. And his airways were closing off and his eyes were all puffed up. His face is all, capillaries in his face have all burst. He couldn't breathe and we've had his steroid with him, which we thought he'd grown out of this, but we had the steroid here anyway. Um, turns out he, yeah, hasn't quite grown out of it. Did you have a good night? Oh, it's great. <laughs> it's it's what it is. Got to look yeah. after the little fella. He's okay now, but he's, he can still, is very much wheezing and labouring a little bit to, to breathe. So we can't stay another night. We can't risk it. We've just got to get him back. So the uh, boys next door are awake. Very, some of them are back on the beer already. And here's the little fella. Just down here. Hey, Ali, how are you going? There's one. Not very good. <coughs> yeah. Would you like to go home? Yeah. We'll get home, hey? After cutting our trip short last year, without even pulling on a wetsuit or loading a spear gun, we headed home. Thankfully, Ali recovered quickly from his croup, but we were left with the feeling of unfinished business. So after 12 months, with the perfect weather window finally opening up, we packed the boat, topped up the fuel tank. We full yet? Hole in the tank. Hole in the tank, you maybe you got it in the rod holder. Still going, I think we're definitely gonna clock 600. Hey? Yeah. Okay. tank. And set off on the long journey back. With Ryan's sights set on a solid reef jack, and Ali eager to find his favourite little sea snail friends. A lot of stuff to carry when you're camping on an island. Soon you'll see your tent there. Yeah, it looks like yeah, it looks like that is a path, but it's a dead end. It is a dead end, and there's lots of spiky sticks. And there's what's what's there lots of on this island? Friendly spiders. Yeah, loads of spiders on this island, but it's very beautiful. We go for a walk? Okay. Let's okay, let's go. After setting up camp, we take a stroll around the island. The southeastern side is usually the windy one, but it's where little rock pools form, filled with hermit crabs, sea slugs, and to Arlington's delight, sea snails. What have you got there? Snails. Are they your friends? What's their names? Sally and Sandy. Sally and Sandy? Yeah. Oh. They lived, they, they sailed that country and went through this country. Ah, I see. Cool. Oh, look, it's a <laughs> look, Oh, is that a hermit crab in your hand, Ali? Or a snail? Snail. Is it? You sure? <coughs> yeah, they all say. Yeah, there's hermit crabs in yeah, there. Funny shell. It's pretty cool, isn't it? That's his home. Yeah, look. There's hermit crabs everywhere going for a walk. Wait, look. As the sun slowly dips behind the mainland to the west, we settle in for the night, already eager for the adventures that tomorrow will bring. Good morning from our beautiful tropical island. We arrived here yesterday. It was a bit of a rough trip here. It was about 10 to 15, then 15 to 20 knots. Ryan has just headed out on the paddleboard to go and get the boat, which he's bringing in now. Ali's having a bit of a swim and we are about to go for a spear because we ate our chili con carne last night, which was really the only kind of other food we bought. So let's hope that we get some fish today. I'm betting on coral trout. 
think Ryan wants to get a mangrove jack or a jack, I should say, reef jack. Um, but let's find out what we get. Dad. Well, it's still probably Dad. last 12 knots, maybe. Dad. A bit of a rough ride here, punching straight into it. We're on, um, just come over to Cairnsweave. It's not too far from Hope Island, so uh, quite a nice looking bomber here. We'll just have a look and we need something to eat. Ryan's got a trout, but he seems to be swimming with it out of the water, which he never does. So I'm thinking there might be a shark there. I don't know if he's trying to show us or whether or not he's got a shark there trying to steal it off of him. We thought there might have been a shark because you were swimming with it out of the water. Yeah, a couple of sharks. Hey, I didn't think it was too bad. Like, there was like two, there was three. Oh. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, that's great. Beautiful trout. Yay. Fish in the esky. Okay, back at camp, back on the island. Ryan got us a couple of nice trout. So I've already cut one up into just thin slices, like you can see that. Um, just nice and thin. I've got a bit of caps yellow capsicum just for some colour. Not hot chilli. Hot chilli and a tiny bit of garlic. Because you're not cooking this, the garlic can be a bit strong if you put more than just a little bit in. Um, cherry tomatoes and I've got a lemon and I'm going to put a bit of orange in this one too. I normally use lime but... Um, I've only got lemon, so the orange should make it a little bit sweeter and not quite as sour. So I'm just going to chop up this, whack it in with my fish, and then we need to leave it for probably a couple of hours, yeah, um, and eat that later on. But while we're waiting for that to cook in the juices, we've got a bit of sashimi as well, so we're going to have that. Time to give it a go. Oh. This is a monster. What a balloon and the source of this. Bit of protection. Yeah. <laughs> can never be too safe. It's good that it stops it spilling everywhere. Some for some. It's a shame. It's so shame, yeah. Look at that. Bit of fresh cold trout. Probably an hour old. Let's try it by itself first. Mm, real good. Yeah. yeah, that one. We've chilled it down so it's nice and cold. Bit of wasabi. Mm. Need a little bit of ginger too. I love it. <laughs> Don't mind a bit of ginger. Very, very good. How'd you go shooting these fish, babe? Yeah, it was actually pretty challenging. The viz out there is pretty poor. I think it's only like maybe four metres, five metres or something. Very mm. cloudy. Um, the trout I shot obviously just came up and I didn't really have to do much to duck dive and chase it down a bit and shot it. I think I see the footage. But as soon as I shot it, Pretty common heap of uh, well, one decent sized reef shark came in, and then I think within a couple of seconds there was four, all about two and a half meters or something. They were just buzzing around, wanting to feed, and so I just to make a smart decision, take a straight put back to the boat. Yeah. Uh, oh, somebody has to pick up one. No, nah, we'll just start as a one. I don't know about yeah. these rules. These rules keep changing every single time. <laughs> <laughs> out there. Just, take it. Just 
got him out of the way for a minute because he's driving us bonkers. Ryan's going to take over and finish off the ceviche. Uh, the other thing left we've got is coriander. Mm -hmm. Not everyone's favourite. And tomatoes, which we're just going to add a little cherry tomatoes if it's a quarter or not. So I'll start with these. Alright, that's all that. And tomatoes, and a quarter. Man can cook. That fish has been cooking for a few hours now in the orange and lemon juice. Good. Did well. <laughs> Ceviche and fried rice for dinner. As the sun set on another beautiful day, we refuelled with our fresh coral trout ceviche and fried rice before settling in for the night. Morning arrived early, announced by the calls of the pied imperial pigeons nesting in the branches above. These pigeons migrate from New Guinea each year to breed on islands along Queensland's coastline, including our own little paradise here on Hope Island. Uh, we're going to head out today for a spear and hopefully, I'd really like to get a nice jack. We uh, usually get a few up here, and some quality fish. So I'll be looking in some caves today for some. Um, yeah, while we're on the island here, we've actually got a bit of an electrical system going on. We do run an angle fridge, running a bit of comfort. Just got a King's lithium battery, which has been awesome. We've had it now for over a year and it's been good. So I think it's 115 amp hour, 120 amp hour. Um, so we run that. Um, got the 200 watt solar blanket out in the sun, runs pretty much all day, charging the system. We run the fridge, fans, lights, and charge pretty much all our phones and electrical gear drones and whatnot during the night. Oh. Ryan's jumped in. Only one of us will go in at a time because we've got Ali, unless he's coming in for a swim as well. But Ryan's just jumped in and got us a nice trout. Oh, Ali got a fish too. Yeah. Nice one. Look, oh, about the same size, Mr. Coral Trout. Let's bring him around here. Let's look at him next to your Mr. Coral Trout, Ali. Here. And there's Ali's Coral Trout, and here's the other Coral Trout. Oh yeah, same size. Ryan's just got another one. <laughs> so this morning we went for a little spear close by. Ryan got a couple of trout there, but um, unfortunately it was a bit rolly on anchor and Ali started to feel pretty unwell. So we didn't want to we didn't want to upset him anymore. So we went back to the island, managed to get half a quill into him without him knowing, and now we've just come for a bit of a snorkel. We're just going to move to a new spot now. We've got the paddleboard. Ali's jumping in and out of the water. He's got his vest on and his stinger suit as well. So at least he's feeling better. Beautiful day to be getting towed around. Ryan motors from bommy to bommy with Ali and I in tow. We've got a few nice trout chilling in the esky, but still no sign of a jack. That is until... Mom, Dad, say sorry to the fish. How'd you go, honey? Nice, Jack. Lift it right up. Can't see it. Beautiful. Oh, it's a big one. Very big fish. I uh, finally got a decent fish. 
85 centimetre jack. Nice one. Uh, yeah, shot him in a nice cave there, about 10, 12 metres. He came out in the front and uh, yeah, just stuck down to him and he tried to slowly swim away and he turned enough to get a good shot. Stoned him and then the spear fell out. <laughs> Still managed to get him up. Good fish. Some pretty uh, vicious looking teeth on this jack. I wouldn't want him to bite you. <laughs> Strong fish. Strong fish. <laughs> oh, I've got the poison in the bag, I'm towing up. And they head around to another spot. We've got that beautiful big jack in the bridge now. So we've certainly got plenty of fish for dinner. Ryan's just filled with the fish so we can have some fish for dinner tonight and just paddle back in. Here he is. Made it. What you got there? Fish for dinner. Coral trout? Yeah. Beautiful. I don't know what I'm going to make yet. Mm. Okay. Maybe curry. <laughs> It's going to be extremely bad lighting, but anyway, here I am. Um, chopping up some broccolini. And I've got some water chestnuts here out of the can. Baby corn. Okie dokie. Going to add our chilli and garlic, that is. I've got this green type curry just because it's super convenient because it comes in such a small pack. Just cook the curry paste off a little bit before you add the coconut milk. And I've got some coconut milk. You can use coconut milk or coconut cream. Obviously coconut cream is going to be thicker. Coconut milk's going to be a little bit more healthy. But the trick is you never want to put it all in at once. You only want to cook a little bit off with the curry paste to start with so that you can add some in at the end. I'm going to add a little bit more of the coconut milk now. And because this fish is coral trout and our veggies also are not going to take long, they're probably going to take about the same amount of time. So I'm just going to add the fish in. And let that warm up. And then I'm pretty much going to add most of those veggies except the herbs straight away. Put in that corn. Actually all of that can go. The only thing I'll keep out for the moment is the herbs. And we'll add them in at the very, very end. Let that go for a minute. I think this is going to be good. What Ryan's not happy about, but every curry needs, is a little bit of sugar. Just sprinkled on. Give it a little stir through, and it makes a big difference. And I'm sure you're better off having any Kit Kat. Yeah, we don't need any Kit Kats. <laughs> we just need a little bit of sugar in our curry. There's our coriander and shallots. So that is ready and over here we just steamed up, uh, we just heated up some microwave rice packs that come. You just warm them up in a pan with a little bit of water and they're done straight away. So that's very, very handy and we are ready to eat. Oh my God. <laughs> this is really, really good. Mm. That is so, so good. A bit of like mango chutney would be really nice with it, a bit of sweetness. But it is really amazing. Our last full day on the island begins with lattes and pancakes. You'll notice we're always cooking on gas, as fires aren't permitted on this national park island, and campsite bookings are essential. 
We dive in for a morning swim, soaking up every last bit of what this place has to offer. With one final hunt ahead, we try a different tactic. Uh, I'm going to try a bit of lion fishing. It's a pretty rare thing to do. Can't ask me to go to a market here and store it. Can't catch. <laughs> yeah, we don't lion fish that often, but the viz is not very good here at the moment, so we're a bit worried that maybe all of our footage from speed fishing is going to be. Hazy and green, and which can't be helped sometimes. So we thought we might just go and have a bottom fish and see if we can't catch something. Can you hold it straight, Ali? Time to catch a fish? Yeah. Well, we haven't even got a bite yet. As our time here draws to a close, we make the most of our final hours. With the unfinished chapter of this adventure now written, we rinse the salt from our skin under the boat's freshwater shower and watch our last island sunset with sand between our toes. Tomorrow we'll be spent packing up, travelling home, unpacking and washing down the boat. Adventures like this are very hard work, but the rewards are always worth the effort because in the end, a life without adventure is a life half-lived. 